Hello, I'm Viv and welcome to Open Education Week 2017 and you've hit us on a gorgeously sunny day in Bristol in the UK and it's not raining for a change. Um, I was very much inspired by being involved in Open Learning 17 last week, <coughs> which is an open course. Um, last week was facilitated by Steve Greenlaw at University of Mary Washington and Steve was really filling my head with lots of amazing ideas around the use of open textbooks. Um, in the US and Canada, open textbooks are widely referred to as open educational resources, OER, whereas in the UK we're, we're a bit more variable in our application of the, the term OER and we, we use that to mean any kind of learning material that someone is willing to share. Um, so I, I'm always a bit surprised that open textbooks haven't really taken off or, or had a significant amount of awareness raised about them in the UK. So I put together this video to try and um, raise some awareness and introduce you to a whole host of incredible people and incredible work and amazing students that is going on in the US and Canada. Um, so enjoy the video. There's a blog post that accompanies this that then fully attributes all the, the clips that I've mashed and stolen and um, will link you to all, all the amazing people that you see in this resource. So enjoy. So one of the most compelling arguments for the use of open textbooks in the US and Canada and elsewhere actually, but you'll, you'll hear about this in a moment, is around the reduction in student debt. And we know in the UK this is a significant problem for students at college and universities, um, but we, we really don't pay the attention that I think it really, really warrants um, quite urgently now. I looked at one of my programmes in my department, which is a science department, and just took four very, very fundamental textbooks and um, that, that accompanied sort of year one, two and three study and put in there also a, a book that might accompany a student on a research project in their final year. And you'll see from the figures there, we, we're readily toting up seven, eight hundred pounds um, for, for these books. What we see on the next chart is actually if we take these sort of educational costs in context with the other financial burdens that students face. So it's not just about tuition and fees, it's about um, cost of living really. That suddenly, you know, if, if a student was holding down a part-time job, and a huge majority of them are, they, they would have to work a significant number of days a year, something like two thirds of the year full time, just to, just to keep afloat. So I, th I think we do warrant a thorough look at this area in the UK and to see what we can do to support our students. But we'll hear from other, other practitioners in the field now. For the past several years, I've become uh, increasingly concerned about the price of uh, textbooks for my students. Uh, the students who are enrolled in Sociology 1113 can pay up to $220 a semester for their textbooks. And I teach about 700 students per year in my Intro to Sociology classes. If I save each one of them up to $200 for, for the price of a textbook, uh, when you add that all up, it's almost $100,000 per year in savings. So here in the U.S., textbook prices have been rising about four times the rate of inflation, and the typical textbook costs $100 to $200 a piece. Major publishers are making matters worse by coming out with new editions that drive up costs and by packaging textbooks with expensive supplements that make sure students can't sell them back at the end of the semester. Although publishers have started to offer ebooks. The prices are still really high, and they come with all sorts of restrictions on access and printing that make them impractical for many students. Really, the current market is failing to provide students with high quality options that they can actually afford to buy. Uh, so open textbooks are textbooks that are licensed in such a way that enables them to be um, adapted by faculty who want to use them as teaching resources, so make modifications to them that make them more appropriate for the teaching and learning context. And the other big benefit of them is that they are free for students in the electronic versions of them. Students at about a dozen colleges who adopted OER, and 
there's lots of things in this particular study, but the one that I want to focus on, kind of a unique finding that they had in terms of student outcomes, had to do with the fact that students who used OER took 15% more credits than students who used traditional textbooks. The, uh, the outcome of this study, interestingly, would indicate that students may be able to graduate more quickly when using OER because they're taking more credit. Similarly, in this study, they also found that across 15 different classes, in nine of the classes, there was no difference in the student pass rate. In five of the classes, students using OER, the treatment, did better than traditional versus one control class, traditional textbooks did better than OER. So you could reasonably say that students were uh, quite likely to do as well or better when using OER as opposed to traditional textbooks. But it also enables a sense of um, sort of a community building. You're, sh you're sharing your materials. You're offering people across the institution the opportunity to share the work that they've done, but also share their knowledge, which is obviously the primary reason that we're all in education, is to share knowledge. I also think it puts institutions out at the forefront of um, of education across Canada, but also around the world in terms of sharing their materials. It puts a good footprint out there. But as we go down this list, we start seeing things I think that the open textbooks can be that regular textbooks just absolutely cannot be. And I started seeing this for myself when I built an open textbook. Um, I, again, I teach literature roughly like 1400 to 1800. So all of my texts were in the public domain. And yet my students were paying basically 86 bucks a pop to buy the Heath Anthology. I decided to make it a class project that we would build this textbook together. And in the process of building this replacement for the Heath Anthology, I realized the true power of the OER textbook, which is that my students became contributors, um, felt super empowered by participating in creating the content that we were going to use in the class. Yeah, the fact that it was free was very nice. I know for some classes, if so for a lot of classes, you don't even know if the professor is going to use that textbook, but you usually end up having to buy it to know if they're going to use it so you can have it on hand. Otherwise, you'd be waiting for the first two weeks of classes without a textbook if they did or did not use it. So it was really nice just to have an easy, easily accessible free copy of a book and even if like even if a professor wasn't going to use it as much you hadn't paid anything for it but you still had that resource at your disposal certainly the 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 most obvious one is awareness um and i think raising awareness is is ongoing it's a challenge i think the word is spreading it's easier to create cultures within institutions but there's no marketing campaign there are no sales reps for open educational resources and that's a, a big big challenge <laughs> So I think we've had some quite exciting arguments there and some lovely early pieces of research um, pointing us towards the use of open textbooks. Clearly the cost benefits go without saying, but I think what is really interesting are the, the deep and wider benefits to learners. New pedagogies emerging, that lovely example of students co-creating the book that they're following cohorts of students we're going to use. So I think we need to ask some questions um, you know, what is our textbook culture here? How do staff use books? How do students use books? My students want books. I surveyed them. They are buying books. They want to be using textbooks. So I think we need to understand a lot more about that. And I think we need to start raising awareness, as Rajiv said in his video clip towards the end, to uh, start exploring these new potential opportunities afforded by open education. Do you agree, Spike? Spike, please.